brothers and sisters, the Lord has been exceptionally good to us. I've been in the midst of the gross darkness that is afflicting the world. So many things happening globally. Please, brothers and sisters, don't stay in blissful ignorance. The things concerning the world realm were a place we have never been before. Gross darkness is indeed upon the earth. Killings, butchering people alive, so many evil. But in the midst of it all, just as the Lord told us some years ago that there will be a dual thing happening, gross darkness enveloping the earth in the midst of the Lord, of it, the Lord is bringing light for his kingdom church to come to a place where we manifest the culture of the kingdom. It doesn't matter where we are. We are the same. One Father, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one constitution, one culture also. And that's what the Lord has been teaching us in Cost 313, Kingdom Culture. And today, in Lesson 27, the Lord wants to bring us into a few sundry components with which we're going to round up one aspect of the study of the Kingdom Culture. And then we go to another aspect by tomorrow. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you. Let your spirit move again and bring forth food for our consumption, for our edification, for our strengthening. Have your way unrestricted. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen, amen. And so we continue our study on components of kingdom culture. You see, the beautiful thing about the word of the Lord is that you can have a thousand people share the same passage, and each of them will receive light from the Lord, showing to you that only Elohim is all-knowing and all-supreme. He can give 1,000 people different angles to the word, and we all can be blessed. So what we are sharing, there's nothing new other people share. It's just that in this particular dispensation of the gospel committed to our trust, the Lord says to his own across the world, we ought to live by the same values. We should have the same morals. We should have the same kingdom culture governing the way we live. And speaking of that now, we come to component number 15, integrity and truthfulness. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 33, Again, you have heard that it had been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thy oaths. But I saw unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is Elohim's throne, neither nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communication be nay, ye, ye, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. Process in the Torah, there's an express provision forbidding people to make light of the name of the Lord. You know, don't use the name of the Lord in vain in Exodus 27. However, as with many provisions of the Torah, religious leaders had added their salt and pepper and salt and pepper and in the B to try to modify either add or subtract, they ended up creating a mess of the Torah. And so, it is important to know that part of what they were doing was to give them room to make money off people. So, if you swear an oath, you couldn't keep it, you pay that amount. If you swear that, you made that commitment, you pay that amount to get yourself free. So that is part of the game. You see that today. There's nothing new under the sun where people do things for money, prophesy for money, everything for money, everything for money. Men and brethren, but the Lord is coming here to tell us something important. And that is, we have no need to swear in the kingdom. We have no need. We have no need to introduce anything and add to our speech. We have no need to swear by heaven, where the Elohim lives, the earth, his footstool, Jerusalem. They all belong to him. 
So any of them we use, it amounts to using his name in vain. And therefore, also, we, we are owned by him. So we can't use our head to swear because he, we are his. In other words, the Lord wants us to come to the place where we receive an article of faith in the kingdom, that the name of the Lord should be held in deep reverence, should not be dragged down to the mess of humans. Our Father in heaven, Matthew 6 says in verse 10, Hallowed be your name. Revered is your name. Honored is your name. Brothers and sisters, let's not drag his name into our messes. This is for every one of us. For citizens of the kingdom, therefore, a higher ethical standard requires us to be people of our word. Speak what we mean and mean what we say. Let me take it again. Say what you mean. Mean what you say with no gray area subject to either swearing or requiring people to figure out what we really mean. Our communication should be clean and wholesome. Our king says that whatever is more than that simple, hurtful, simple, truthful word does not come of good. It comes of evil. Speak the truth one to another. We're told in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. These principles need to be taught to our children when they are still at a young, impressionable age so that they can grow up to be people of integrity and speak the truth as it is without needing to swear an oath in order to seek confirmation. We don't need any confirmation. Say the truth. They are punished for it. Praise the Lord. It's so important we understand and parents should play a major role in letting people know the power of truth. I remember one time the Lord led me, I called the children, I said to them, listen, it doesn't matter whatever it is out there, just tell us the truth, you know what? It wouldn't love you less, while even one inch, even on the other hand, will love you more. Just say the truth to us. You know what? Let's imbibe it in them when they are young now let's go on to kingdom culture component number 16 it's about vengeance and retribution belonging to the lord we had mentioned it before in an earlier part of what we're teaching verse 38 you have heard that it has been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but i saw unto you that you resist not evil but whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the daughter also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile with him, go with him twain. So here, the concept of retribution, which was in the Torah, as a basis of legal judgment by judicial authorities, in other words, is somebody hurt somebody in the eye the judge will rule that you lose that eye too you will got be hurt in that eye because you inflicted it to another person civil authorities made the ruling it's not you taking the law into your hand but you see somehow the way the religious leaders interpreted the torah if a lot of people thought they had the license to now go and do what was done to them and the lord now came you know you find this in exodus 21 24 and other extant scriptures the 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 lord began to also address that concerning kingdom culture he brought a number of principles together Three main principles. Number one, resisting evil and evil doers often requires engagement with them on a level that could be called strife. If you ask people who know the law, they tell you that there's a difference between a quarrel, an argument, an affray, you know, and fight. They have different levels, but they're all based on the principle of striving. You are pushing for something. Somebody gave you a blow, you gave back a blow, and before you know it, you know what? Our walk with the Lord and our witness for Him can be tarnished when we allow ourselves to get into altercations with those who do not believe or have not grown. They may be believers, but not grown. You know what? The worst thing you can do is to allow somebody to drag you down to their level. Say no to Bolekaja. Remember, Bolekaja is a term in Lagos, Nigeria, 
for come down, let's fight. The touts who run the the, the, the public transport system or private transport system, they will quickly, they you know, if 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 you they tell you to move and you didn't move, they can just invite you to come down, let's fight. If you well dressed, a corporate executive begin to fight with a tout in a motor park. It doesn't matter what you think, how how stupid that man is, you thought. The moment you come down the bus to pick a fight with him, anybody who sees you will tell you that you are wrong. And the same thing the Lord is saying to us as kingdom citizens. We must avoid anyone dragging us down to their level. As long as our focus is on the glory of the Lord and potentials to expand his kingdom influence, whatever we suffer for his sake is an act of worship. He releases his peace into our hearts at such times. This was a normal experience of disciples of Yeshua who embraced all that Satan and wicked people and officials through at them, through the sink at them. They embraced such even unto death. We saw the death of Stephen. Go and check the go and check in Bible history. All the twelve disciples, apart from John the Baptist, John the Beloved, who got to eighty something who was preserved by Yeshua specially. Check all of them. Check how they died. Check how they finished their pilgrimage. You see what it means. And yet, you know what? Just like Yeshua, they went like a lamp before her shearers. No debate, no argument. Yeshua was just there, and they did what needed to be done. So, resisting evil requires engagement with them. And if engaging with them will bring you into Bolekaja lifestyle, you better leave it. Better leave it. Two, trust in Elohim, who is a just judge to fight for us, is good practice. Romans 12 verse 18 says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men, that neighbor from hell, that neighbor besides you who will dam the waters and who will cause who will jut out his uh, roof you know in order that the, the when the rain comes it will splash over the wall to your own deliberately do it men and brethren the lord is saying we need to come to a place in our walk with him where we trust elohim as a just judge to fight for us if it be possible romans 12 18 again as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, verse 19, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto rot. Give place unto rot. Anger on steroids. Give place. Don't let it build up in you. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he test, give him drink. For in so doing, Thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. You can imagine. This is 360 degree walk. If somebody offends you, you know what? And you have this approach, you will never get into a spot with anybody. In your place of work, in your business, in your neighborhood, anywhere and everywhere. A part of being the light of the world and the soft of the earth is to walk on the road less traveled, to walk on the narrow way and let people call you a fool because your value system is different from the world. Brothers and sisters, didn't Yeshua model it as we said before in First Peter 2, 21, for even here unto where ye called, because Yeshua also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps, who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Even up to death on the cross. And the Lord says to us to emulate him our, our king. The third principle interconnected is the superiority of love. When people offend us, the narrow way requires us to forgive them unconditionally. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter how they did it. You know what? Anything we refuse to forgive is actually an indicator of an old man that is at work in us. So, forgive is natural. But 
That is the narrow way. There is even a narrower way than that forgiving. And that narrower way is to activate the fullness of love to respond to their evil. In so doing, light is contrasted with darkness in high definition. Did you evil? And not only did you not respond, not only did you forgive, you actually use good to answer for that. And so it's so important for us to understand that principle and take it and stop allowing ourselves to be walked up by what people said or did. Look at what again. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But he said, don't resist evil. If it smite you here, turn the order. Of course, that didn't mean if somebody is carrying a knife, stay there, let him cut off your head. That's not what it means. It's simply a manner of speech about an attitude where we do not allow ourselves to be walked up. You know, there's something the Lord wants to do in us through this course. One of it is this. Every one of us must come to the place where there is nothing inside of us that will, can be stirred up from outside for vengeance, for negativity, because a sanctification that is truly deep, not surface, not tongue, is so deep that there's no room. You can't find it, even if you were trying to look for it, because the Lord does it at the cross. He does it with the word. He does it with the blood. And the Lord is inviting us in discussing kingdom culture and studying and understanding it. Let's be open to him to do this work that be so deep that we can come to that place where evil doesn't move us. Because we trust the Lord. We know him. We know him. Somebody see you at the law to take away the outer coat. Let him take the inner one also. In the days of Yeshua, Roman soldiers carried heavy backpacks so they could just lay hold of a Jew. They saw a Jew because they were colonized people. They say, hey man, I want you to carry this for one, one mile for me. You can't say no. They are the overlords. He said, hey, when, they, when you are laid hold like that, don't just do one. Let your love propel you to do two. What do you think will happen if we begin to live this way across the world? Our witness will be extraordinary. We don't need to stage expensive crusades all over the world. They will be, take note that there is something going on. I've seen a group of people that are older, worldly. They are not like ordinary people. Yes, they may have my same skin color. They may have my same features. They may live in the same postcode, zip code. But I've seen a different people. And you know what? That will raise the witness of Yeshua mightily. The Lord is challenging us to go for it. Brothers and sisters, let's go for it. Let's be foolish. Let's go for this level of deep, 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 you know, consecration to the Lord. That there's nothing in us that is negative or evil. Men and brethren, Kingdom Culture Component 16, verse 42. Give of him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Now, this is important. We understand what he's saying here is not an endorsement of begging by saints who refuse to work or earn an income or who are not doing full-time ministry, really pouring out their lives, but they just want to live at the expense of others. They go on Facebook to make friends, not because they want to have a relationship. They think that if they can make a thousand friends from the Western world, this is a thousand sources of income. They, they write all kinds of story, send you pictures. They are dying. They are, on, they are on life support. All those funny games, all those funny stories. No, the Lord is not endorsing such people. There's no way he would endorse them. The culture of the kingdom does not endorse such life. He's talking about people you know. It's not, you know them. You know them. They are in a squeeze. They are in a situation where there's a real squeeze and they need help. You know what? Just as prayer, Yeshua talked about a friend who went to a friend at midnight and they have that kind of emergency. Don't you have something they need? Don't turn them away. Where would your conscience be? If you turn them away or you pretend you didn't hear, where would you be? How can you sleep easy? How can you rest easy? That is the kind of thing he's talking about. 
brothers and sisters, but we also need to know that the Lord wants the kingdom church to have a social safety net that takes care of those who are not able, those who don't have, who have limitations either by age or infirmity. They are not able to take care of themselves. The kingdom church should have a vibrant social safety net. And in the days of Yeshua, it was there when people were hungry. The disciples said, send them away. Say, no, they've been with us. Give them to eat. Where can we get money? Let them sit down. He will bless bread and fish, multiply it so that everybody has something to eat. And in the early church, Acts chapter 2, they had things come up. They made care, they took care of other people. In Acts 4, the same principle, even Barnabas went and sold land and brought it and laid it at apostle feet and said, you know what, you administer it. You know what is best. You know, that, that man is one of the most extraordinary vessels of the Old Testament, I mean of the New Covenant Church. He took it. He didn't distribute it himself. He said, you know what, I don't want to draw attention to myself. I don't want to be the center of attention. You do it. No wonder he was called the son of consolation. Take note of these brothers and sisters. The Lord discourages laziness and loafing around, whether on social media or real life. Those who will not walk, those who are just busy trying to have pipe dreams and they want to live off other people, the Lord discourages that. If you say you are called, you are a young person, you went into full-time ministry, go and prove it by the way you pour out your life. It will be so evident to everybody. And the Lord, out of the people you are ministering to, the Lord will raise those who he will use to sustain you. You don't just do things. You just go there. You want to wear the latest fashion. You want to wear the latest wristwatch. You want to wear the latest uh, um, uh, trainer and walk. You don't want to walk. No. What does the Bible say? Second Thessalonians 2.10 For even when we would to you, this we commanded you, that if any will not walk, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exalt by our Lord Yeshua, that with quietness they walk and eat their own bread. This is the new covenant. And so all those people who are just bombarding your uh, your inbox and you are feeling guilty because of the bombarding and they are sending you pictures, they are out of order. They are out of order. Those who need help don't do that. They are honorable. And those who particularly prey on people in a particular area, no, they are not doing well. Now let's look at number 17. You know, number 17 component in our love standard should be like our Heavenly Father. That should be our reference point. In everything we do, our Heavenly Father should be our reference point. Verse 43, Matthew chapter 5, you have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, that you may be in so doing. You become the children of your Father which is in heaven. How? For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send a rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So the standard is our Father. We have his DNA in our bloodstream. Let's yearn to be like him. You see, you can fail if you want to be like another human being. And the Lord hasn't made us clones of anybody, no matter how popular, no matter how famous, no Christian should be a clone of any human being. But each of us has the DNA of our Father if we are born again, running through us, desire to be like your Father in heaven. 
if that is our standard, we're going to find ourselves never satisfied. Like Paul the Apostle say, hey, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I'm doing, I forget the things behind. I am reaching forward to the things that are before because I want to apprehend that for which I've apprehended by the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when we begin to do like this and live like this, you discover a whole new level of living superior to the world. You don't need to do so many preachments. It will be so evident in our conduct, in our attitude, in our lifestyle, in our preferences, in our priorities. That is what the Lord is saying. Kingdom culture is what he wants the church to grasp. We've had so much dogma. We've had so much denominational teachings. The Lord said, go to my world. These truths are there. If you check, we are not referring to books or that authority or that apart from a few places where we talk about people who had also, you know, commented on these things. It is the world that is the constitution of the kingdom. It is the constitution of the kingdom that contains the culture of the kingdom described. When we open up ourselves, and that's why the Lord also wants us, every one of us, this year, make Make up your mind that we'll cover the whole new covenant before the next open gate. To this this week, you know, for instance, there is the continuation of Matthew 16 going back five chapters this week. By Friday, you finish, you use weekend to review what you learned. And you know what? If you are open, we will have been learning things that is in the Bible. They say the Bible gathering dust is a gold mine of revelation. And I tell you, the Lord is going to purge his church with the washing of water of the world this year. And it's going to be global everywhere. And I can't tell you how excited it is to just see that this is happening across the board. We're going to stop here. I hear that some of you have questions about you know, women in places where, you know, most of them were married to other religion is what, you know, what we can take those things any day the Lord gives us time. But for now, this is what we have for today. And we'll go into another depth. And I just want to tell you, open your heart. Let Holy Spirit do what he has to do. By way of assignment, please share what is it you receive from today's teaching that you consider significant. What is it? Whether it's one or two or three things, what is it? Number two, please review all the teaching, Matthew chapter 5. How is it affecting you as a person? What key things have you learned in Matthew chapter 5 that is going to be of eternal, I mean, going to be of value to you in your work with the Lord? Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you for your release. Lord, we ask you to just have your way and glorify Yeshua. Holy Spirit, plow our hearts to bring forth fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. By the blood of the eternal covenant, we debar the enemy from snatching what has been sown. Have your way, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday, and then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream, and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac, to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or 
anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the Yes course or be, do the master class, you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels, this YouTube, gsom.tv, and we also have a Telegram channel, GSOM Media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com. We love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.